Hi there. Welcome to our story time this year. The book that I chose is called The Donkey Who Carried a King, and it's by R.C. Sproul, and it's illustrated by Chuck Gronink. And I thought it was just appropriate to listen to this story, to hear this story, to read this story uh, for you since it is coming close to Palm Sunday. So I hope you enjoy this. Many years ago, there was a little donkey named Davy. He lived in a village close to the holy city of Jerusalem. He was too young to work, so he was kept in his pen. He had brothers and sisters, but none of them could play with him because they had jobs to do. Sometimes they carried sacks of olives for their master. Sometimes they worked for people in the community, and some of them even carried grown adults on their backs. Davy didn't have to carry anyone or anything. All he did every day was stand and wait, eat and sleep. Davy was bored stiff. He was so unhappy because it seemed no one wanted, no one wanted him to do anything. The other donkeys who were kept in Davy's pen told stories about previous famous donkeys of history. One had belonged to a man named Balaam. A wicked king had asked Balaam to give a prophecy against God's people. As Balaam was riding the donkey to the place where the people of God were camped, an angel blocked his path. The donkey stopped, but Balaam couldn't see the angel, so he got very angry and he hit the donkey. Then the Lord God gave the donkey the power to speak. The donkey asked, What have I done to you that you have hit me? Balaam said, You are not treating me right. Then God let Balaam see the angel. And the angel said to him, What you are planning to do is wrong. When Balaam heard that, he decided not to prophesy against the people of God. The donkeys also told a, sto told a story about old Barnabas, one of the older donkeys who lived with them. Many years before, Barnabas had lived in the town of Nazareth. His owner was Joseph, a carpenter. Joseph and his wife Mary, who was about to have a baby, had to go to his hometown of Bethlehem. Mary rode on Barnabas' back, and when they arrived in Bethlehem, it was time for Mary's baby to be born. All of the inns were full, so they spent the night in a stable where the animals were kept. There, Mary had her baby. His name was Jesus. Shepherds came to the stable and worshipped the baby Jesus. They knew he was the Messiah who had come to save his people. Afterwards, Barnabas carried Mary and the baby Jesus back to Nazareth. Davy liked to hear about those stories from the famous donkeys and the important things that they had done. He wanted to do a big job too, but his master never picked him to do anything. But one day that all changed. It happened one morning when Davy was feeling especially down because he had nothing to do and could only eat and sleep. Davy saw two strangers coming. They spoke quietly to his master. Davy tried to hear the conversation. He couldn't make out all of their words, but he did hear one of the men say, because the Lord has need of him. And Davy wondered what they were talking about. Davy's owner came to the pen and opened the gate. He brought Davy out and he led him to the two men. Take this donkey, he said. His name is Davy. No one has ever ridden him before, but I think he will be able to do the job you need. Davy wondered, what are they going to have me do? Whatever it is, it seems important to these men. They led Davy down the road, and soon he saw a crowd. The two men spoke to the person who seemed to be in charge and called him by name. His name was Jesus. Some of the people in the group put their coats on Davy's back. Then, to Davy's astonishment, Jesus got the group together, and he got on his back. It felt strange to have someone sitting on his back, but Davy was excited too. He started to walk toward Jerusalem, carrying Jesus. 
As they went down the road, a multitude of people came around and put their coats and palm branches on the ground in front of Davy and Jesus. They began to sing and shout and wave palms in the air, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Davy was amazed by what he was hearing, and he thought, A king is riding on my back. I can't believe it. I've been chosen to carry a king. Davy made up his mind to carry the king to the best of his ability. He stepped carefully along the path of coats and palm branches, and he tried hard to carry Jesus as smoothly as he could. After Davy and Jesus came into Jerusalem, Jesus got down and patted Davy's back. Davy watched as he entered the temple. Davy felt so proud of himself. I carried the king, he thought. I must be a very special donkey. The next day, Davy's master decided he was ready for regular work. One of the servants put two sacks of olives on Davy's back and set out to deliver them. The sacks weren't heavy, but they did scratch Davy's back. Once or twice, he got so tired and miserable that he sat down right in the middle of the road. But the master's servant tugged on the rope around Davy's neck and pulled him along. By the time Davy got home, he was very grumpy. Why did the master make me carry those olives? He was grumbling to old Barnabas, and Barnabas said, We are donkeys. It's our job to carry things. Whatever the master decides to put on our backs, we are to carry them. Every job is important, even carrying sacks of olives, and you should do your best at everything you do and do it well. Huh, said Davy. I don't think I'll ever enjoy this kind of work. I think I'm better at special jobs, like carrying important people. But Davy had to carry things every day. Sometimes he carried sacks of olives, Sometimes one of the servants rode him on an errand for the master. Davy didn't enjoy any of it. He couldn't understand why his master was giving him such ordinary tasks. One morning, one of his master's servants led Davy to a village on the other side of Jerusalem. As they were returning through the city, Davy saw a crowd coming down the street toward him. The people seemed to be shouting angrily at someone as they moved along. The servant led Davy to the side of the road so the crowd could pass. Davy saw the person the people were shouting at. It was Jesus. It was the king Davy had carried into Jerusalem amid such joy only a few days earlier. But now the people seemed furious at Jesus. Davy wondered about that. Then he noticed Jesus was carrying something, a rough, heavy beam of wood. Jesus seemed to be struggling with the beam. And with a gasp, Davy saw that Jesus was hurt. His back was covered with cuts and bruises, and his head was bleeding where it had been scratched by a circle of a crown of thorns. Suddenly, Jesus fell down. He couldn't carry the beam any farther. Davy wished with all of his heart that he could carry the beam for Jesus. He tugged at his rope, but the servant held him back. The soldiers who were with Jesus grabbed a man from the crowd and they made him help carry the beam. The crowd went on down the street and the servant led Davy away. He was discouraged and confused and sorrowful. They shouldn't have made Jesus carry that awful beam, he thought. He's the king. Why did he have to carry it? Why were they so angry? When he got home, Davy found old Barnabas. I saw something terrible today, he said. The king I carried was hurt, and the people made him carry a big wooden beam. Why did they do that? Barnabas looked at him kindly. I remember when I carried Jesus and his mother home from Bethlehem, he said. His mother and his father knew that he would die to save his people. Someone had told them so. It seems that prophecy has come true. The king was carrying the beam of the cross on which he was going to be crucified. 
Davy was amazed. So the king was being a servant to others, he said? Yes, Davy, Barnabas said. It's a terrible thing that he is being treated so badly, but what he is doing is wonderful. Davy was quiet for several minutes. At last, he said, if the king was willing to carry that terrible beam, I will not complain about carrying our master's olives. I will follow Jesus's example and I will be a willing servant. Jesus died on a cross that day. When he died, he gave his life to save his people from their sins. In a way, he carried their sin and their guilt. By dying for them, he took the punishment that they deserved for sinning against a holy God, the punishment you and I deserve. He was a king, but he was a servant to his people. I hope you enjoyed this story, and I hope you remember to be a servant every opportunity that you have. God bless you during this Easter season.